So I'll take a few minutes because there are a good number of Cirrus users to explain to it. Then we'll go back to the Pentacam. Can you bring the Cirrus to the center, please? Have you got, can you bring it here? So major challenge, what, uh, yeah. Please. Just a quick question, does the Cirrus default to tangential curvature? It is, you can change it also. I was just curious, because that's, that's different from the a, many, any other many device things. that I've seen. Yeah, you can, you can change it, but it's, uh, because many treatment from Cirrus is from the tangential maps. What's the treatment, oh, uh, okay. so I think, because they are linking this thing up. But ten tangential maps are great, but they are, they are noisy and they're not what most of us are, are used to looking at. Okay. So they, on first glance, they typically look abnormal. Um, These are the same patients. So the major challenge uh, for people using Cirrus is when they come and say that how, in, in Pentacam, when you look at this here, this is your posterior elevation. It's a nice round thing. But in Cirrus, you don't see that very clearly because you don't have a values here. But most of the time, the Cirrus is not about a value or a number. Cirrus is all about this. So we have used our mind because we use from OpScan or Pentacam that everybody goes, if you're looking at a pentacam or you're looking at an elevation map, it's all about numbers here. For example, if it's 5, you, they say that if we add 10 more, it becomes 15, and this is the elevation. But in Cirrus, you probably, if you use the cursor here, all this, for example, the, these are all the indices. If you want to know, you can click on it, you'll know the full form. I have not memorized them. No, I want this in this is here. And no, no, the previous one. Okay, don't change anything. Don't don't touch anything, okay? So, what is happening is they use a surface irregularity, they use aberrations of the surface. They use the aberration of the front and the back surface and create a lot of indices like this. How smart they are, how good they are, it's very difficult to say because many machines today have a lot of them, but it's not possible to judge or base anything on it. For example, if you look at, uh, uh, this is an important one, longitudinal surface ab aberration. What it means is it uses, it takes it, uh, the longitudinally and looks at the irregularity of cornea. That means if you have one area which is very flat, the other area which is very steep, it gives you a value. It basically tells you, if it's well within this green one, that how regular your cornea is. This, I think, is a very useful tool, especially when you are using, when you're planning your, say, multifocal surgery. Uh, for a cataract surgery, this is probably one of the most important tools which I like because if this is beyond somewhere in the red, that means that there is too much of surface irregularity. The second place where this can really help you here is your patient comes back after, say, a refractive surgery and he says, I have a night vision problem or glare or halos, then this is one of a very good indices to see whether your you do <coughs> on a patient, I'll show you a scan, you do it on a patient and this band is in this blue area, that means that it is not something which is abnormal, but it's somewhere in the red, that means you know that there's a lot of spherical aberrations which is irregular in the whole zones. That means that this patient, just giving him just a glass or something may not help, he may have to do some topo guided treatment just to correct it. This is one very useful tool for people doing multifocal surgery. <coughs> and then, uh, yesterday, if you go back to the video we have made, uh, it is on the group uh, about reading this map. There is a map about SVF and there is a cutoff values. So, intuitively, uh, 
whether we like it or not, when you're using the uh, Cirrus, it's the values you play important to. I don't think it is not just the images. Images are there, you can see some changes. Images are from the curvature maps, but not like uh, how we read a pentacam, because if you see, uh, if I ask Professor Bell, and this is a keratoconus case, and you can see that there is a posterior elevation, there is some changes here, but you don't see that classically very nicely. It is there, but this is keratoconus, that's why you see some changes, but you don't see so beautifully out there. So there is one other indices. This is called the BCV. BCV, it is nothing but, it is something which is useful because it is not an elevation one. It talks to you about changes on the back surface of the aberrations. It's just an uh, aberrations. I, I don't know if you, somebody can click on it, it will tell you exactly what this is, uh, the full form of that. But it, if it's very high, uh, Dr. Chetty has asked me once, how do you look for it? You look for this PCV, and if it's high, if it becomes somewhere into this zone, that means there is a high amount of imperfection or irregularities in this system. So this is the map which is sometimes by default, but if you go into, uh, there are a lot of other, uh, if you go to the refractive, uh, this is only for the screening, but there are a lot of other maps also, like go to refractive, Refractive analysis, I think it's here. In this refractive analysis, uh, there are root moons, mean square of anterior surface, root mean square of the posterior surface, and there are a lot of these root mean square, that means basically the machine for that root mean square it is trying to anal analyze the changes in your aberrations, in your elevation. So it's basically, you don't have much data on from where they have, how they have done it, but it's all loaded here. Unfortunately, you have to blindly trust and believe that it works, and it is, it is good, but it is, but something which we have no control. I'll ask uh, uh, Dr. Theo Saylo, have you used, do you use this Cirrus often? You, you use it? So can you come here? There are a lot of questions on Cirrus which people, if you can come here and it looks nice and tall here. You can see the world from a different view. So people have asked me because we have, there are a lot of these values out here. The RMS A, RMS uh, in the, uh, uh, the different zones. These are different zones. For example, the zones of, uh, you can change the zones of millimeters from zero to two, zero to three. So you can keep it one, one system or you can keep changing it. Basically, Cirrus has many, many of these factors where you, that's where the confusion comes because these values can be changed according to the zones. But as a refractive surgeon, what are the major ones you see which makes you tell the, tell, it makes you believe that's not good for the procedure? Yeah, it's working. I'm sure Michael Berlin will not like it very much. I'm just, I'm the, the very old-fashioned guy. I'm just looking at each chart myself and make my decision based on just experience. I'm sorry to say that I'm just some, with, the, with, with that eye on the left side, superior. I'm seeing it's a less than normal thick cornea with a little bit decentered uh, thinnest point, which is suspicious. And the next thing I'm going to the right and I'm seeing, oops, it's 48 diopters, even more suspicious. And uh, also there is some, um, say, irregularity. And then we look for the anterior float and the posterior float. Actually, the anterior float is not used very much by myself. I don't know why. Maybe I need some help from Michael to tell me how important that is. But with the posterior float, we look for islands, and then we go to the numbers, yeah, to the our, our, our root mean square, um, and, and in the elevation, see how irregular that, that surface is, and also which Q factor it has. If it's a very bulging forward surface, then you get a very negative Q factor. And so 
um, having all these numbers and the, and the charts together, and you see, hey, this is a highly suspicious guy, and I would be, I would like to see what the um, uh, Berlin Ambrosio makes out of it. Uh, can you put the Berlin Ambrosio for okay. this, please? See, it's somewhat suspicious, yes. isn't it, Michael? <laughs> Can you, can you go back to the one you had before? Okay, so I don't use the serious, so I, I, I don't, but well, I do want to comment, if you look at the uh, posterior and anterior ele ele elevation, it uses a scale of plus or minus about 120, which for screening purposes is too wide. So both uh, Galilei and Pentacam, at least we, we default to plus or minus 75. The other thing, though people commonly do that, the color scale you're using here is, they call it the American, it's actually the OrbScan colors. And it was really designed by OrbScan because OrbScan's noise originally on the posterior surface was so large that everyone looked abnormal. It's really a terrible color scale to use. Can you go and just change can you change the color scale? Just click on the, click on the uh, color bar on the right. Nope, nope, on, on the right one. Nope, 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 nope. Yep. Go down and just put th that one, which is the same one you'll have on the bad. Go ahead. Notice, <coughs> notice now you can easily see the posterior island that was somewhat masked on the American scale. So I always tell people not to use, that was a default color scale for a machine to mask its, its noise. I know Brad was nodding his head, that's kind of, so there's clearly a posterior ectasia there. And now you can go ahead and put the bad back on. So basically, this also can be, you can also change it, but most of the time the company gives you a, what is pre-recommended, so it's all exactly at this, as it is, for example, this map sometimes looks very noisy, but it is you can change it from sagittal to tangential. Even that can look a little different if you're on a tangential map. But for a refractive surgeon, if I can ask somebody to put a suspicious, this was a classic case of keratoconus. On a cirrus, if I put a, uh, a suspicious case of topography, uh, these one of them, if they are like how you have uh, these, I'm making it very, trying to make it very simple. It is not the right way to do, but these are all yellow. There are a lot of these indices, and finally you get this, which is easy for the refractive surgeon. Similarly, you also have them here, but you don't have a value. It, it's a color. And these are all from a normative database which the machine has, and these values are always there. See how many of them are really useful, and many times, they say that can we compare one of this to say this? It is difficult. It's not possible. You, you can, you have to look at this machine as an individual entity, not at something we are trying to compare. So, use this. And most of the <coughs> in the in that group, I think we published an article in AGO where we compared all of them and figure out which of them are very useful for your uh, clinical practice. And there are this RMSA and BCV, uh, back surface. I uh, think these are the changes which you need to pick up and keep it in your, like, you can make your own stuff. You can make this, like, how you have these values out here. They will be mathematically differently derived. But you can pick up and tell your people that if these things are higher, then please let us know, or you can just intuitively look at those maps and say, okay, these are all things which are higher. I, I'm trying to oversimplify, I know that, but that is how a lot of us actually read a topography map. And uh, if you go to one of the suspicious ones, Dr. Natasha, if there's anything else you do, because yeah, you use yeah. only the this. Other, <coughs> the other thing, and this is true for any of the machines, uh, tangential maps are noisier. <coughs> They're second order equations versus first order. Um, I would be very careful in looking at what you call a K-max or the highest K on a tangential map because it, it, basically it's a single point that tends to be 
very noisy. Now, this one may not if it's a good quality, but if you go back to the axial map, on some maps, you'll see a very big difference between steepest K on tangential versus ax axial. <coughs> Excuse me. When we originally designed the bad display, as you know, we, we center on the thinnest point. Um, we did that because that was actually a very consistent, reproducible point. The original design I had was actually to center the anterior and posterior ind individually on highest tangential K. And we found it was just not reproducible. It was so much noise in that system that you couldn't do it. So I would be really leery about some of the numbers on tangential. I would always go back and look at axial um, just to eliminate noise. Um, I, I fully agree, and I have no idea how it came in the, in the eight years I was not uh, cooperating with, with Trin that they put the tangential map as a primary map, as a default map. Yeah. And tried to change that um, very, very, very intensely. But still, there is a lot of hesitance inside Schwind Company because they did it now for 15 years like that. I personally fully agree. I think the tangential always leads you in the wrong direction to more irregularity and very, very dangerous things. If you look at the axial, it, it reflects our, uh, our, our, our feeling for a refractive. Uh, map much better than the tangential so one. So originally, prior to Scheinfluger OCT devices, the tangential map correctly was viewed as giving you a better indication of true shape, which it is true because it's local, it's more local curvature, it's kind of instantaneous, some people call it instantaneous, while the axial map will actually distort because the axial map takes every point in the cornea and the radius of curvature has to fall on the uh, normal to the whatever the line of sight of that machine is, is using. So it tends not to really mimic shape, but it's a less noisy map. And the tangential map, you can think of it as it's basically a free floating, uh, and it has to use radi it has to use tangential points next to it to get the radius of curvature. So it's better local power, but it's very noisy. And for for the refractive surgeons, again, uh, you have an anterior, the posterior, you yeah. can change the zone zero to six. It's also important if you're putting your multifocal lenses. Many times have people have come and asked me, uh, is there a something on, on Cirrus where you can look at for the multifocal? I mean, if you, are, you have a patient who has a very high, if it's something in here, and he's coming here for a multifocal lenses, that is something which you need to be worried about. So everything is there. You don't need to relook at any other machine because it's just that we have not, there's not much of a literature on this, so there's always a little confusion. And uh, Natasha, there's one more screen where it, that graph comes on this. Can you just put that in? That's one, uh, it, it, it has a summary thing with that. It says, uh, um, on the upper right one, upper right one, do Can interior tangential curvature. Can you put this graph, that one which comes here? Go back to the, uh, the first. So I, I just asked them, I, I just wanted you to see next to the, so the upper left one is axial, the one on the right is tangential, and you'll see that this probably, if they put, if you put anterior elevation on the bottom right one, No, not, you'll have to know, click where it says tangential curvature back, and you'll give a drop down. Nope, 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 nope. If I had a pointer, I would. Okay, click where it says tangential curvature back, and, that'll, and now hit ax, anterior elevation front. Go back, back down like six. 
elevation front. One more. Nope, right there. Good. And now you have to click to the right because you're on a 150 scale. Click on the color bar. Click on the color bar on the right. And now hit the first relative 25, top, top one. Yeah. Okay, it's still relatively normal. Okay. So I just, your axial map and your elevation map look fairly normal. Your tangential map almost looks like you have a, a, a cone there. Um, so it's just different maps, and it's get, we're really what, you, what you're used to. Um, Uh, one, 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 sorry, one, one point about the tangential map. It's not that the tangential map is wrong. It's, it's not wrong. It's just very different from what most of us are used to looking at. It's different than, uh, it's certainly the, a different default than what most of the other machines are. Uh, the, other, the other issue on the Sirius is it appears to default to tangential and the ANSI scale, the 1.5 diopter, and I, I don't, I, I don't agree with the 1.5 diopter color steps for refractive screening. You miss, you, you miss a diopter um, plus or minus missing 1.5 diopters depending on exactly how it cuts before you get any color change. So I, I would say that it's, uh, it's making it challenging, uh, A, and B, there's no reason that you have to stick with the, uh, the maps that the machine comes as a default. Um, I, I don't know, and I, Michael, you pro I, we don't use the Sirius, but if you have that, it, it looked like the scale on the elevations was quite large as well. It, it looked is. like it was it is. 100 to minus for, 100 or something. So right. For screening, not my medical practice, for screening, I use plus or minus 75, and that's what the bad display defaults to. If in my medical practice where I'm dealing with graphs and cones, not trying to screen normals, then I use plus or minus 150. Yeah. Because if you have true cones, you'll be off the scale. Right. But for screening, I'm not trying to describe the cone. I want to know, is it normal or not normal? Yeah. And there you want a sensitive scale. Can I ask you to do one more thing? Hello, hello? Change all those three, upper left, upper right, and lower right, just to the back, back surface. 